Welcome to Carolina Eagle Distributing. We are celebrating there being the October Small Business of the Month, and we are here with Joe Saputo, the president, and Taylor Barker, who, of course, is the chairman of the Small Business Committee for our chamber. Joe, we really wanted you involved in this because I remember when you came to town and you brought your family and we all celebrated, yeah, wow, the Saputos are coming and they're moving this wonderful business, I guess, from Tarboro yes. to the Rocky Mount area. But Give us some background on what led you to choose to come here and, and how your adventure has been. Well, first off, you can't beat the South. Um, <laughs> we were, I, I began my career in uh, Detroit and I, I lived there for 26 years and I went to New York for 18. Uh, then the opportunity came up down here to buy out the Smoots and so uh, it was kind of like a win-win for everybody involved. I uh, got my family down here with me. All my girls moved down. Uh, my son, he went to school at East Carolina. He's in the business with me. And uh, it's just been a very good adventure for the whole family. Mm -hmm. well, we and a profitable are. one too because of the community. We've got great support. Well, we certainly are very glad to have you. And uh, Thank you, you. you guys have been more than supportive for this community and, and we truly appreciate that. And, and glad to have given you this award. Thank you. And there, we appreciate it. And there have been changes in the time you've been here. 87, is that when you came? 95? Came in 95. Well, 90. 87, yes. You bought the business. And, and we, bought, we moved here in 93. 93. And right. right across from North Carolina Wesleyan yes. College. What changes? I mean, you have clearly seen huge changes in your industry. What are some of those? Change, the biggest change has been uh, consolidation. Uh, as you know, SAB Miller and ABI have just, uh, they have joined mm -hmm. forces. So, I mean, it's, it's a shrink, it's not a shrinking market. There's really no growth in the market at this point, but you're having a massive amount of consolidation amongst brewers and amongst wholesalers. And uh, it's just getting harder and harder to make a living, but you're gonna have to consolidate sooner or later and get bigger. And that's what we're trying to do at the present time. Mm -hmm. So basically, you guys have to try to come up with more creative ways to get out to your market as yes. opposed to in years past. Exactly. It's completely different than it was years ago. When I started in this business, there were three or four SKUs. There's up to thousands to 2,000 worth of SKUs in the market today. It's What's an SKU? The SKU? Or different it? package of SKU. Okay. okay. Uh, 12 ounce can, 16 ounce can, bottles, quarts, 40 and, ounce. In local breweries too. How yes, and local breweries have come in, which has made it very exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a diff it's a different, uh, it's different type of brew, and it's, they're, they're doing well. The you know the Tarboro breweries and the rest of those. Mm -hmm. North Carolina is one of the top ones, as a matter of fact, for uh, micro brews. Yes, sir. It is. And as you look to the future, I know you're really tickled to have Russ here. Brag on Russ a little bit for us. Oh, God. Russ, <laughs> uh, I got criticized in his career very severely by my family because when he graduated from East Carolina, I made him go, I made him go away to work for someone else. I wanted him. So he decided to go work for the brewery, and he worked there for seven years. Uh, then one day they wanted to put him in. He was, he was out in the field, he was a fields director, and they wanted to put him into uh, the pricing department in Chicago, and I went to St. Louis and said, I'm bringing him home. I mean, the last thing he needs is a desk job. He's an outside guy, he loves sales, and he's come in here and just taken a tremendous amount of pressure off me. Yes, sir. Well, that's, that's always great. So to now have I'm a hero in the family, before I was a <laughs> schmuck. <laughs> Well, and, and to, to send him off and let him be trained and let him kind of learn new ideas and experiences Absolutely. and cutting in the trenches and coming back. Well, Joe, Absolutely. again, we're so grateful for you. you. We're grateful for what your business has done for our community. You're, you're really caring and investment in us. And we're going to go and present the banner to you for okay. Small Business of the Month. Great. But thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Hello, I'm Calvin Balance, Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Rocky Mountain Area Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the members and board of directors, 
I want to congratulate Carolina Eagles Distributing Company for being Small Business of the Month for the month of October. We want to celebrate and thank them for being a vital part of our community and hope that it will last for years to come. I want to turn it over to Taylor Barker, Chairperson for the Small Business Committee at the Chamber. Thank you, Calvin. Taylor Barker here, Chairperson for the Rocky Mount Area Chamber Small Business Committee. And on half, um, half of the committee, I would like to thank um, everybody for coming out and would especially like to congratulate Carolina Eagle Distributing Company for this award for the month of October. Um, and with this, uh, Russ, uh, this puts you in line for a chance to win the Small Business of the Year uh, at our uh, Small Business Banquet in June of 2017. And uh, we wish you guys the best of luck now and, um, of course, in the future. And uh, these, uh, this company is certainly deserving of this award because their extreme involvement in the community and they play a vital role in the everyday lives of people. Just not serving them alcohol, but they're here during the tough times as well as the good times. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Russ. Yep. Uh, thank you so much for the, uh, the honor. I appreciate it very much. Uh, as far as I know, I've been here 11 years, and this is the first time I've ever got the honor to accept this award. And um, so to hear that I'm going to be actually in the class field like a Westridge Grill that won the Small Business of the Year Award, uh, you know, that's, that's a great thing. They're one of my partners. They're a great operator, and uh, we're doing tons of stuff in the community. That's how you stay active. That's how you grow your business, grow your sales. And uh, it's just an honor uh, to be able to accept this award. Um, as, as you stated, that you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with uh, disaster and everything else. Last week, we worked our butts off, and uh, we delivered 2,100 cases of canned water to the local Red Cross and uh, several other locations, Edgecombe Community College. And um, it's just been really nice, those feel-good things. And that's what we do. We've been doing that for 25 years, since 2014. We've been in business 27. And uh, we, we, we appreciate it very much. Thank you all for coming. And uh, we look forward to uh, Small Business of the Year. Russ, we are in your office. And Taylor, I would have to say this is probably the coolest office I've ever been in. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. Gene was like, I think you need to move the chairs around. I was like, sorry, I'm a little bit enamored with everything that's going on in this oh. office. <laughs> Golly, well, you've been here since 1987. We had such a good time speaking with your dad. And you were you always groomed to know that you would someday take over the business for us? Abs absolutely. Um, even as a child, when my father used to drive trucks, um, I was always with him whenever I could. And then, you know, he would work on weekends. Uh, I would remember going up there. Actually, I have pictures in that desk right there of me riding on a forklift with him on the side while he unloaded trucks on the weekend just to be able to spend time with him. So, um, yeah, it's always been part of my life. And, you know, I've always known that there is something for me. Mm -hmm. um, I just had to work really, really hard at it. You know, it started with a great education from East Carolina University. Graduated from there in 1999 and uh, moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma to work for Anheuser-Busch mm -hmm. for five years, which is where I met my lovely wife, Krista. Um, and I spent seven years actually with Anheuser-Busch, moved to Springfield, Illinois, spent some time out there, and I did everything that I could with them to a point of where my next step with them would be a pricing department which I really wasn't mm -hmm. into that because it was in downtown Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really wasn't into that. So, um, you know, pricing is a key thing, but I was always wanting to be on a street making a difference. Mm -hmm. And uh, so once I finished up there, I moved home here in 2005 and assumed the uh, vice president of sales position here and assumed the uh, equity agreement manager role, which is what Anheuser-Busch is your lead person to run the operation. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, er ever since then, it's been the business has just changed so much. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have seen. There's just a lot of craft beers being mm -hmm. produced, you know. Um, but still, every day, people go into that store and they know they can find Bud Light, they can find Michelob Ultra. So you know, we have to stay focused on those brands, but we also have to adapt to the change of taste profiles of drinkers. Mm -hmm. They want variation, they want fruit, they want this, they want, and that's fine, 
but they always come back to that brand that they can always go to the store and buy mm -hmm. uh, for a good reasonable price. And it's been interesting to watch that evolve and how it's changed the business probably forever. What, do you have anything besides beer? Any other yes. <laughs> well, was that you that made that comment? <laughs> no, no, but I did see on, on the, the application where you had said that. Something about water. Uh, no, uh, it was the water, but also the, uh, the La Marita. Uh, I've, I've never tried one. Tell, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about because I saw where you said that you think that's an important product that you guys have put out. It is, uh, like I said, taste variation. Um, tons of different flavors. We just came out with cherry. It's a limited edition. So Anheuser-Busch has some staple brands. They have a strawberry, a lime, a mango, and a raz. Then they'll float in every three months a new flavor to just try to kind of keep it fresh and mm -hmm. get people excited about it. Problem is, is that sometimes people really like those flavors and then when they go away, people are upset because mm -hmm. they want to find them. So we do what we can and tell people, hey, we still got a lot over here at this store and we try to move them around a little bit. But um, those Ritas are 8% alcohol, and they come in a little 8-ounce can, so you can do the math on how much alcohol is per ounce. Yeah. So, uh, but they've sold very, very well, um, and people are mixing them with other flavors, making their own little flavors. They're mixing them with ice, making slushies out of them too as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, pr it's pretty great. But uh, other items that we carry, yeah, we have, we have non-alcoholic items too as well. We have Nesquik chocolate milk. Uh, which we acquired about three years ago, which has been phenomenal. We're doing very well with it. Uh, V8, um, mm -hmm. so everybody likes V8, good vegetable juice. And then they have some splash flavors that are um, a raspberry, and then they got a tropical too as well. And then we carry another brand called Sparkling Ice. Sparkling Ice is interesting because the, it is a sparkling, zero calorie, zero, um, I mean, it's water, but it has coloring to it. And it's just absolutely phenomenal with what that brand's been able to do. And it's a dollar a bottle. It's got a very tall, slender look to it. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, we're, we're excited to see what that brand's done for us too as well. Yeah, it's really obvious to me that, that you realize you have to be changing all the time and that a lot of your success and your phenomenal growth, I mean, yep. just phenomenal growth, yep. and that's good for all of us. Mm -hmm. um, yep. I mean, the, the better our local businesses do, do, the better the whole community does. So, now, are you grooming your son? Do you have one son or more than one <laughs> I have, son? <laughs> I have one son, and he is named after my father because it's uh, Italian tradition. You're supposed to name your firstborn mm -hmm. son after your father, which my grandfather's name is Russ. That's where I got my name from. And uh, just trying to keep that tradition up and running. But, you know, my two daughters, um, Lexi and Sierra, Lexi's 11, Sierra's 5, and um, they love to be here too, it's just as much as Joey does too. But you know, something between a father and a son, and he gets really into being here mm -hmm. and enjoying it. And uh, but the girls, you know, my, my cousins were in this business a long time ago, and there's tons of successful uh, female operators for Anheuser Busch right now. And there's no telling, but they they will be afforded the same opportunity I was. Mm -hmm. uh, they have something that I've worked so hard to take it to the next level. And if they want to take it to the fifth generation, that would be great. And we hope you'll be like your dad. You're, you know, he's turned it over to you, but he still comes in every day. Yeah, he still comes in every day. He sure huh. does. And are, is a lot of, are a lot of these things things he collected? A lot of these things are actually, this is my stash. Your he stash. has his oh, own good. stash in there. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, he has his own stash. He has a ton of, uh, you know, steins that are dated and just amazing. But I'm a huge NASCAR fan, football, and everything else so I've collected this stuff for the past 20 years mm -hmm. and just just keep saving it because you get some people that come in and they go wow I've never seen that then you know that you got something pretty cool yeah oh, you know yeah. like that little bud man the guy in the corner that uh -huh. little foam bud man I found in a store in Jacksonville Florida at a convenience store for 1999 and the guy had him pinned up and that thing right now is worth almost seven hundred dollars and he's mm -hmm. nothing but foam but I found him, he was in good shape. I was so excited and I was like, I gave the guy the $20. I almost felt guilty because I knew what it was worth. <laughs> wow, well we're gonna to talk to some of your employees and then you're gonna join us again at the end. So okay. thank you. Great, good deal. Thank you all very you. much, appreciate it. Hi, I'm Richard Koss, Pharmacy Manager at Almond's Drugstore at the Westridge Shopping Center. 
here with my wife, daughters, and my business partner, Brad Hilton, and his wife, Katie. We are delighted to be new business owners living in Rocky Mount and are excited about the new services and products we are adding at Almond's Drug Store's two locations. With a full-service pharmacy, a large supply of over-the-counter supplements, and a comprehensive line of diabetic supplies, Almond's has you covered. Our pharmacists also specialize in consultations. We want you to pay the lowest prices and get the best service in town, and our staff works hard to help you save money, but we are also big on friendliness and customer care. We will deliver your prescriptions free, have drive through windows, and guarantee short wait times. And we come out to greet you personally and see how we can answer all of your questions. Because as local business owners, we care about you. As a loyal member of your community for over 70 years, you can count on Almond's Drugs to make the health of you and your family our top priority. Please call Almond's Drugs today. 443-3138. Hi folks, we're back here at Carolina Eagle Distributing Company with John Winstead, uh, the key account manager, better betterwise known as Bud Man. <laughs> and uh, it's my understanding you've, you've been here quite a while, haven't you? 40 years. 40 years. Yes, I was just a kid when I started. I understand too that you were here before um, uh, the Saputos purchased the, the business as well. I, I was. I started with uh, Smoot. Smoot? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smoot out of Tarboro. Okay. So it was smooth wholesale at that time. Yeah. So I guess you, you if you anyone around here was going to be able to tell any stories, that, that would be you. Uh, but. I've seen a lot of them. I'm telling you, things have changed over the years. You know, when I started, we had like, I don't know, three brands and, and mm. six packages. And now we got a hundred brands and 300 different packages. So things have evolved over the years. And that's a lot of the reason for increasing. I mean, that was one of the things that we looked at as the business has grown. Obviously, Russ, with his leadership and his dad before him, and, and with your great help, I mean, he said, you got to talk to John. I couldn't do it without John. Now, I'd be sure he pays you sufficiently for, for knowing oh, that you yeah, can't do it without yeah. John. <laughs> but they, you have to keep adding on and doing more, and, and therefore, the, your number of employees here has really grown up, too, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, they have. And uh, I think when I started, we had three trucks, four mm -hmm. at the most, and uh, now we, we're like, 13, you know, mm -hmm. 10 routes every day, you know, it has grown over the years. What are the counties that you cover, John? Uh, we cover the Edgecombe, Nash, Halifax, Northampton, uh, part of Warren, and part of Franklin. Mm -hmm. And so every day? Every day, you yeah. Do, okay. Yeah, so. um, t tell us kind of what a, a normal day is like here. What time do you start? What time do you guys normally end? Or? Oh, man, we unlock the warehouse at around 5.30 in the morning. And, uh, you know, it varies from day to day, but most of the time we'll leave, I'll leave, uh, maybe it's 6.30, 7 at night, you know, but, you know, that's, that's, that's the business, you know, you gotta, you gotta be here to see it get done, so. So you're not driving anymore, you're supervising and logistics? Yes, and yes, I, I, I haven't driven on a regular basis on a route in, I don't know, 20 years now, I guess. But uh, it, it's still, I, I do it if it needs mm -hmm. to be done. You know, I have no doubt, but yeah. that you'll do it if it needs to be. <laughs> Where'd you get the nickname, Bud Man? Uh, it just evolved over the years, and people just started calling me the Bud Man, and you know, it just stuck. Mm -hmm. So, uh, matter of fact, I even got my van license tag, got Bud Man. Bud Man, so. mm -hmm. I have seen that. Mm -hmm. I will, yeah. Yeah, yeah, have you seen that, Taylor? I, I believe I've seen it around town. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, I wonder who the Bud Man is. It's been a good business. It has. Well, and you are often the face of the business. I mean, the, we're going to talk about a little bit later with Russ how much you all do and give back to the community, and whether it's yes, during the floods do. or yeah. other times. But but you are often the one out meeting and greeting and delivering, and yes. you know people are mighty happy to see you when you show up, aren't they? Yeah, they are. They are. And we try to be involved in the community. You know, just last week, you know, I carried some water to Tarboro. You know, mm -hmm. to help the flood victims and all, mm -hmm. but. And we we do whatever needs to be done to help out. So mm -hmm. that's just that's just part of the business. Well, forty years is a pretty long career, and I know you said you started as a child. Yeah, um, but well, I was twenty two. So twenty two. I, I was a child when I started. So. Well, I'm certain that the Saputos hope that you were are here for a long time to go. Does I, this? I tell Russ all the time that uh, you know I've I've seen his uncle John when he started. I, I've seen him through, and his dad Joe. And, Mm -hmm. Now Russell, I told Russell I'm waiting for a little Joe now, so 
I'll be here when he comes too, I guess. So. Well, great. What well, and, and you organize the people as they as they deliver, but that's predominantly what you all do is you deliver whatever people order every day to them. That's correct. Yeah, we we deliver Warehouse. whatever they order, and we hate to say just deliver, but we we try to sell. Good. You know, uh-huh. you know we don't we don't want to just call ourselves delivery guys or delivery mm-hmm. men. We uh we try to sell in new products that they don't have, so. It helped grow the business. And yeah. how do you do that? Like when you have your, your route people show new products when they're out there? Yeah, I mean, if, if they're out there delivering and they see something in this account that this account doesn't have and they know we have it, mm-hmm. then they'll try to sell it to them. I mean, oh, that's, great. that's how they grow business. So. Well, obviously it's worked because yeah, you're doing yeah, really well. Yeah. We're going to meet the office manager and one yeah. other lady. I think normally there are five people kind of who work in the office, but only two of them are here right now, so okay. we're going to meet them. But, okay. John, thank you. Thank you. It's been thank great you visiting you. with you. That's okay. Thank you. We are joined by Amanda Pierce, the office manager. And I would think behind, I mean, so far we've interviewed men. Mm-hmm. And generally women are pretty, pretty necessary to keep men straight. Oh, yes. um, I mean, we, we won't tell anybody what you say during this interview, of course, but um, how many people are in the office? We have five girls in the office at the moment. And what all the paperwork and all, they kind of tell us what you do. We're kind of the central point um, with everything. Um, we basically help, we support all of the guys. So um, whether it be sales, truck drivers, warehouse, whatever, we support them in any way possible. Um, of course, we do take care of all the paperwork, mm-hmm. um, invoices that come in, bills that go out, I mean, things like that. And that's a lot. I mean, have you mm-hmm. since you've, how long have you been here? I've been here four and a half years. Okay. Mm-hmm. And have you seen a lot of growth during that time and new products and stuff? Oh, yes. We're always looking for new things and we've always got new stuff coming in. Um, and things change and technology wise i mean from when i first started there's a lot of new new technology that, that we picked up to try to make the job easier um, so that we can take care of all of our customers as efficiently as possible tell us because there you get to be on camera in the other side but tell us the names of the other people in the office amanda um we have dina watts she handles all of our pricing and our it Mm-hmm. Um, we have Joni Summer. She's our sales support. Um, she's really good at taking care of all of us. Um, we have Capricia. She does all the banners and signs you see out in the store. She prints all of those and takes care of the guys and keeps everything going there. Um, and then we have Emma Temple, and she is our closeout person. She basically comes in in the evenings and closes out all the truck drivers that are there in the day and takes care of all of that for us. Mm-hmm. Sounds like as office manager, you've got a good crew. I mean, they, I do. they all kind of do. take responsibility mm-hmm. for what they're supposed to do. Oh yes, and keep it going. I bet you could do a lot of their job as well too, being an office manager. You know, I started out four and a half years ago in IT and pricing, mm-hmm. and um, moved up to office manager. But mm-hmm. yes, I've learned a little bit of everything. Um, there's still a lot to learn. There's always something new every day. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know if I'll ever stop learning in this business yeah. because it's ever changing. But um, but I really enjoy it for that reason. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons I enjoy I, it so much. I get the impression it's kind of like a family too. Russ was talking about his dad and his uncle, and now his kids mm-hmm. are coming in here. So, mm-hmm. do you do you get the impression that you're part of a, a really really nice family? Um, it is. Um, you kind of get used to it, not just with uh, Joe and Russ, but you see all of their family coming in and out. Um, and uh, we also the some of the girls, some of us are related as well. Oh, so. good. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to have Russ join us to, to wrap up the show, but thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, we want to shift gears a little bit and um, kind of, you know, we know that you guys stay in business because you do such a good job at what you do, but we need to talk about something else. Let's talk about your civic duties and how much you give back to the community and how much that means to you guys as a business, but to you personally as well. Well, you know, the people in the community are all my customers, whether they drink my product or not. And, you know, to not be involved would be absolutely crazy. And there's no way that we would be as large as we are right now, going from 850,000 cases of beer in 1989 when we first took it over to well over 1.3 million cases right now. It starts with one case at a time, doing events, big events, small events, just like we got the, you know, the oyster roast coming up Thursday. It's a great event for us. Big and event. And we sell a lot of beer for that event. And we see a ton of people who are also involved 
with the chamber and do a great job too as well. And the Clydesdales. I was in Westridge Shopping Center when here come the Clydesdales. Give us a little bit of the history of how hard it is to get. I mean, we were really fortunate folks to get them here. It was amazing. Uh, we turned, like I said, 25 years in business on the 14th, 2014, and it took us two years to get them here. Mm -hmm. So we worked tirelessly to try to get as much exposure as we could via Facebook, internet websites, and then obviously feet on the streets, going in all of our accounts, putting stuff in the air, and letting them know where the Clydesdales were going to be. And once again, I mean, you don't have to drink beer to love the Clydesdales. There was right. tons of kids there. Um, it's a it's a icon for Anheuser Busch. And you put Rocky Mount on the map when you went to a convention, and they showed what that the feedback was from that. Well, right? It was really cool and stuff to see that. Well, I just got back from St. Louis, and we had such a spike in our internet uh, hits that they actually put me, uh, Carolina Eagle, up on the screen, probably for the first time I've ever seen in my life, because there's over you know, 500 wholesalers in the United States, and they put Rocky Mountain, North Carolina up mm -hmm. there, showing how much of an impact that the horses made in this community. So it, it, it was definitely worth the money. Wonderful. Yeah, well, and you you bringing up your family to, to give back, and through the company with Toys for Tots, you partner with a lot of your customers. Mm -hmm. When they're having fundraisers, you go in and work with them. For instance, the Westridge Grill um, Toys for Tots. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, it's it's one of them things where um, you, you just do everything that you can. You're always looking for new events to do so you can make a difference in, in the community. And, um, you know, you... They're your partners. It's a partnership. And, uh, you know, you see these people everywhere, and it's just nice to walk up to them, shake their hand. Maybe it's the first time you've met them, mm -hmm. and to know that you did something good um, to, to, um, for the community, for that person. And it just I just cannot begin to tell you the, the amount of phone calls that we get thanking us. Mm -hmm. Just a simple thank you for even with the Clydesdales. Just a thank you. Mm -hmm. It was ama absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you too yeah. for all you do for the community. And yeah. we are mighty proud of you yeah. and look forward to having your name in the in the pot for an annual awesome. award. But thank yeah. you very much and absolutely. congratulations. Thank you all. Thank so you very much. much. Congratulations okay. again. Thank you. Appreciate it.